Hey guys, I'm going to show you real quick how to set up some basic toolpaths to cut things out using the CNC router in VCarve. Um, the toolpaths uh, icon, the toolbars over here on the right side of the screen, um, I prefer to pin that down so it quits moving around on you. Um, I'm going to close this drawing toolbar. Um, all right, so to actually cut things out, you got to select what uh, cutting tools you're going to use, what router bits you're going to use. Um, and there are a couple different options for cutting different types of tool paths, profile, pocket, a drilling, um, engraving tool path for cutting text out. So if I got this little sign I want to cut out, let's say I want to cut out the border of the sign. Well, that's going to be something called a profile tool path. I want to cut out that profile. So I'm going to select profile tool path. And there's a couple different options that you can set up. Uh, you can set the start depth. Uh, typically, for, especially if we're cutting through something, that's going to be the top of the material, so that's going to be zero in this case. Uh, the cut depth, well, if I'm trying to cut this sign out, I want to cut all the way through the material. And so I want to make sure this is set to the thickness of my material. In this case, it's going to be 0.5, I believe is what I used um, before. Uh, now I actually got to select the router tool that uh, we're going to use to cut this. If you're doing a profile cutting out a sign like this, a quarter inch up cut bit is a good choice for you. If you hit select, there's a bunch of tools in here. Um, you have to check out some of my other resources in order to see what these different tools do. Um, there's a couple options. They've got all their parameters already uh, coded in there for you, so you don't need to worry about any of this stuff. Now, uh, you want to choose on what side of this line you're going to cut on. So, for example, if I cut on the inside of this line, that's going to take surface area away from my actual sign. So I want to cut on the outside of this line to cut this uh, design out. Um, don't have to worry. You think about a, a last pass. Now, you think about what's going to happen as the router goes through and cuts this profile out. When it gets to the end of that cut, there's going to be nothing connecting this sign to the rest of the uh, material that I'm cutting this sign out of. Um, so what I need to do is add something called a tab to keep that Thing I'm cutting out anchored to the rest of the material. Um, and th that's something I'll have to go in and now cut out by hand, um, but it makes it safer to cut these designs. It won't damage my tools. I won't damage the actual thing that I'm cutting. So I'm going to click Add Tabs to Toolpath. There'll be some default preferences. Those, in my experience, have worked pretty well. You'll actually have to click Edit Tabs. Um, and decide the number of tabs that you want to work with. Uh, two is probably enough for this. I'm going to click Add Tabs. Um, and just as a rule of thumb, my advice is to move these tabs somewhere where it's going to make it easy to take it like a jigsaw and a, or a saw to cut these out. And so I don't want to have to mess around with my corners here, so I'm just moving these tabs a little bit away from those corners. Um, so click close, and I got my tabs. <coughs> um, you can name your uh, cut something interesting. So I'm going to call this, let's call it sign profile. Uh, if you click Calculate, the software will go through and calculate the tool pass that it needs to cut the, that out. Um, and so what you'll see, like the red line here is a movement of the router that's linear. It's not going up and down. Um, the green is where it's actually moving up and down. Uh, the blue tool path is where the router is actually spinning and cutting things out of the material. Now, this will automatically open up the preview tool. And if you preview select a tool pass, it'll show you. That's pretty speedy. It'll show you kind of what paths... Um, the router's taking to cut this out. Um, so that's one uh, profile. Still got two other cuts I want to make for this side. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to go back to my model. Now I want to cut out the text in this sign. So um, there are a couple different ways we can cut out text. The easiest way is to use an engraving toolpath. So I'm going to select the text, uh, select an engraving toolpath. Um, start depth, uh, top of the material is fine. I'm going to uncheck the flat depth. Um, and the bit that we're going to use for engraving uh, is either a 90 degree bit or a 60 degree V bit. Um, so let's see, V bit, I'm going to select this 90 degree bit, yeah, half an inch diameter. That's the tool that I've got for engraving. Um, click OK. Uh, let's not worry about any of those parameters right now. Let's just call this a text uh, tool path. Click Calculate. It's going to show you the path that the tool is going to travel to cut things out. Uh, if you hit preview, it's going to preview that. Um, let me actually speed that up a little bit. There you go. Now we've got the text cut out of the wood. Um, so that's uh, 
the way to handle text. Uh, for the most part, the engraving toolpath does a pretty good job with all types of fonts. Um, sometimes you get, like if the font's too bold or too thick and close together, sometimes you get overlap between these cuts. Uh, but for the most part, it handles normal text perfectly fine. Uh, here's what I want to do with this lovely little triangle. I want to trim out some of the material inside. Um, so to do this, I can do something called a pocket. A pocket's going to remove material inside of a profile. So if I click pocket, um, now I don't want to cut this triangle all the way through the sign. I want to cut it to a smaller depth. I'm going to maybe cut halfway through the thickness of my material, which in this case would be 0.25. Um, the tool I'm going to select here, I'm going to see what this looks like with a quarter inch upcut bit. Um, don't have to worry about that. Um, I'm not cutting through this material, so I don't have to worry about tabs or anything like that. Let me call this the triangle pocket. Click calculate, as I'll show you the tool pass. Let's see what this looks like. So that's going to trim out some of the material inside uh, this uh, triangle. Now, if you'll notice, like the corners of this triangle, they're not very angular. Um, you can think about why that is. I'm using a round router bit to cut out a sharp angle. I can only cut uh, the diameter of the cutting bit. So if I want this to be maybe a closer to an actual corner for my uh, triangle, I might want to select a smaller bit. So instead of this quarter inch upcut bit, I'm going to select a, a smaller bit. I've got actually some, yeah, I've got a 16 inch uh, tapered ball nose bit um, that'll, that'll be able to cut with a 16th inch resolution. Um, so let me recalculate that. I'm going to reset the preview, so that's going to clear everything out. Let me go ahead and preview all of these tool paths. Now you see it takes a lot longer to cut it out with the smaller bit, and there's some ways we can work around that using some more advanced features of the profile, um, but you'll see that the corners are much more sharper and cleaner than with the quarter-inch bit. So if you end up encountering problems like that, uh, change your bit. and You can always run the uh, preview to see what your sign looks like. Well, that's the basics of setting up a, a, your tool pass. Once you're ready to cut things out, um, you could actually save your tool pass using the Save Tool Path button, and any tool pass that you have selected down here uh, will be saved. So, um, since these are using different tools, I'm going to need to save those in different files. Um, so, my advice is to start with the stuff inside and cut the profile last, just so the material doesn't uh, wiggle around on you. Uh, the, the tab should keep that from happening, but it, it still could happen. Um, but it will select, if you see up here, the tools that you need to uh, put in the machine to cut each tool path. So a warning will pop up when you run this on the ShopBot software uh, to make sure you change your tools. Um, so click Save Tool Pass to File. You'll save that. And if you got the uh, control window open on the ShopBot software, it should open up automatically over there.